So in 57 years of living and working in the countryside, I'd never ever heard a sound like it. It was terrifying and terrified. Something really strange is going on. There's an awful screaming noise coming from down the field. All the cattle are up thinking what on earth it is. We can't work out what it is. But it's an awful noise. Something's in pain. I've never heard anything like that before. They're curious too. Shit, let me shoot. We can hear that from inside the house. Let's see what it is. It's a muntjac. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Okay, okay. What have you done there? Hurry up. Run! <laughs> right, hold that. What are you Alright, alright, I've got it, I've got it. Okay, I'm going to stand back. Oh no. I know, I can see it. Oh shit, I know. All right. Muntjac. Yeah. The only way I could get him out was to bring him back. Sorry, I'm just filming the cattle. <laughs> oh, poor sod. That was, yeah. Shit in there. I don't think his foot was broken. I think no. it was just caught in there. <coughs> never heard of those that happened before. I've never heard anything like that before. Well, he's out anyway. Poor little bugger. Oh, I know. Hey, where is it? Excitement on the farm oh, at what? 8 o'clock. I want a cup of lemon tea. You can have a cup of lemon tea if you want. Get you a glass of wine. Yeah. Ah. Caught my hand on the wire a bit, but... A glass out. of sherry. Whoa, shut up. Get you and Nan a glass of sherry. I'll have a glass of sherry. Reward for being so brave. Did it hurt you? Yeah, no, he didn't, but the wire caught me, so. But he wasn't, he was actually, he'd gone over, hadn't he? And I, he, he got caught, his foot caught and he just twisted like up a in nail, a nail. Like, no, 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 he just got it in the wire. So he basically got his foot in the wire <coughs> and it had gone over <coughs> like that <coughs> and caught his foot in the wire, so. <coughs> Never he was well and truly caught in there. <coughs> yeah. Right. Poor little chap. That must have been painful. Really, because that wire was wrapped tight around his, uh, around his ankle. When I first got there, I wasn't sure if his leg was actually broken, but fortunately it wasn't. So 
If anybody says, why didn't I run up to it and go faster? I didn't want to panic it. As soon as I worked out what was going on there, I was concerned that if I ran at him, I could actually do more damage than good. That's why I walked. So, that's better. Got a slow puncture in the mower. But now you've all heard the noise. We heard that from our living room in the house. All the doors and windows were shut. In fact, Julie heard it first. She said, what's that noise? I thought it was a chicken. Begin. I thought one of the chickens had laid an egg. I thought it was a strange noise. And then I heard it again and opened the door. And once I'd opened the door, the double glazing was open and we could, this noise, it was almost like screeching brakes and, well, you heard it. And yeah, we got him free, little buck. I wasn't really sure how I was gonna do it to begin with because of course they have horns and fangs. So those of you that know what muntjac are like, um, they can be actually when cornered quite aggressive. So they have long thin fangs that would put your dog to shame. I mean, we're talking inch and a half fangs, plus their, um, plus their little horns. So the potential to do some damage was quite high, which is why when I pulled him out, um, I basically pointed him away from us so that he would run away. Um, this little fella is regular visitor around the farm. In fact, he lives behind the back barn where the hay is. He's always in there. Go out there first thing in the morning, guaranteed he's out there somewhere. Um, but anyway, he tried to jump the fence, got his foot wrong, got his foot caught in the wire, the wire wrapped around it, basically caught him. Um, if we hadn't um, heard him, he'd have been there all night and possibly next day, it would have been a slow, long, painful death. So I'm really glad he screamed because that scream saved his, saved his life. Right, okay. So today I have got a couple of jobs to do. Uh, this job I don't really want to do, but I kind of have to. Um, I'm on the mower. Not cutting grass, because we haven't got any. What I'm cutting is uh, the leaves off of our London plane tree. Those of you who know nothing about trees know that some leaves rot down okay and some leaves just don't. Well, London plane leaves are like leather. If you don't chop them up, they're there forever. And I know what's gonna happen. If I don't do it, we're gonna get a bit of wind. They're gonna be all up around Audrey's flat, around the back, and I'm gonna have piles and piles and piles of leaves to pick up that still won't rot. So by far the easiest way to deal with them is to go out with a mower, chop them up, turn them into worm food. Coming up then, come on. Come on, round that way. All right, that way then, which, which that way. Awkward. I was getting the look. You gonna take me with you or what? Princess. So, early in the year, I took the 
mulching. This is a mulching deck, but you can make it a non-mulching, just a cutting deck. So when the grass is a bit longer, you can take the strain off the engine and the machine by taking a plate out that uh, lets the grass go. So if I take the plate out, it lets the grass go. It doesn't stay in the mower for so long. Uh, doesn't get cut so fine. Um, just less work. And that's fine, but the thing is, it's not really doing a very good job on the leaves. So I need to put that plate back in. All right, let's put that down there. That comes out of there, goes up on there. That goes out there and goes like that. Okay. Poor blades have had a bit of a hassle or hammering with some of the stones around the place. But yeah, I need to clean this out in here and put said plate back in there. There he is. Right, spanners. See, really strictly, I should um, I should put the pressure washer over there at first, but I'm not going to. I'm going to mount this up, and I'm just going to get a scraper and scrape off the bit that um, that's in my way. Uh, there he is. Scraper, scraper, where's, where's the scraper? Oh, I do wish people would put things away tidy. <sighs> Supposed to, oh, it was up there. I'll shut up, it was up there. Just pretend I never said that bit. Up for that. Yeah, that'll be alright. That feels cross threaded, that's better. So like I said, all this does is it keeps the grass cuttings in in the blades longer. So they, it gets cut a couple of times, so or shredded even. I don't want to over tighten it, but I do want it tight enough. There you go. Okay. Too difficult. Now we're back to a mulching deck. Okay, put you back together again. Let's see what that's in the right place. That's over there. That goes on there. That comes out of there, goes around there, one-handed, hopefully, there you go, one-handed. And then the tension 
goes back on there. One of the reasons I chose this machine over underslung decks is the ease of maintenance. It is so easy to take this thing apart and put it back together again to sharpen stuff, to clean out the decks, because bearing in mind, I cut my footpaths and footpaths around here invariably have cow poo on it and taking the deck off the old mowers to wash it out was an absolute ball ache. This thing, it's 30 seconds. So, yeah. It's been a really good machine, actually. Right then. Which pocket did I put the key in? That one. Shall we? Now, well, till the next lot falls off. 